And now over to Kat. We've all been waiting for her. Um, the journey to um, marketing, what about, to finding my marketing magic. Why did she get into marketing in the first place? How did she get to holistic marketing? Why is she in marketing? Why, why would you be in marketing? Because it's a very clever thing to do. It's her mojo. So I'm going to stop sharing, pass you straight over to her um, and hear what she's got to say. Let's see if I can get onto gallery. Wonderful. Thank you, Jill. Um, I have to say I'm a little intimidated to go after uh, Harold, uh, after the topic we have covered. Um, it has touched me deeply, even though I don't have a personal connection to the topic necessarily, but it's just, I think it's just so important to, uh, for everyone to educate themselves and really um, see it as a human experience that we can somehow be for and, and um, help other, others deal with. So um, I am very grateful to Harold for sharing that. Um, Jill, how much time do I have? Do I have to speed up or is it 10 minutes? Is it 15? What's the... Um, I think I think we can squeeze you in on 15, but you go over 15 and I'm going to cut you dead, all right? <laughs> all right, mid-sentence. Mid, uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was rehearsing my uh, speech yesterday just before going to sleep because I thought, oh, let me, I mean, it's 15 minutes, I have to make the most of it. And um, I try to stick to Jill's um, instructions in terms of what I'm supposed to be talking. Uh, and so marketing magic is probably not how I would have presented it myself, but uh, here we go. So uh, I'm gonna talk about some marketing. I'm gonna talk a little bit outside of marketing because marketing is not all I do in my life, uh, the 24 day hours of the day. And I will leave you with some concepts um, at the end in the last five minutes that you can start applying or it will give you a better understanding of how marketing works when you're self-employed, a solopreneur, and what can you do that is simpler and not more complicated or doing more things and, and being everywhere. So the way that I ended up, ended up <laughs> um, doing what I do is uh, sort of accidental. I never thought of myself as an entrepreneur. I never wanted to be one. I was sort of happy being um an employee really having my stability in my nine to five. Uh, however, over the years of my corporate experience, I have started to sort of lose um, motivation and really uh, trust in the whole setup. And by the time that I was laid off in 2015, I was quite happy to be let go and, and move on and see what is possible for me. And at first I was sort of cruising along and thinking this is how, you know, I'm just going to get another job. And uh, after a few interviews, I just realized it makes me nauseated to think about going back to another corporate setup. And I thought, okay, what's the other alternative? And somehow I thought, well, why don't I try this whole self-employment thing? Because you know what, I am young and I'm single. What else do I have to lose? And this is essentially how I got into um, doing marketing for small businesses, because that's what I did. Marketing and communication is what I did for my job. And I thought that was uh, enough for me to take it over into self-employment, uh, which was um, not exactly how things happened. Because uh, as you might imagine, when you're doing marketing for a big organization, you have the budget, you have the team, you have a lot of resources at your disposal. And when you start doing that for a small business or especially solopreneurs, things are very different. And if you have been uh, self-employed for some time, you probably know what I'm talking about. And over the years, it's been now seven, seven years that I'm doing this. What I have realized is that there is so much unnecessary suffering <laughs> related to marketing. Uh, so much frustration and overwhelm because uh, there's so much to do. There's so much confusion. There's so much advice out there. Um, there's so much uh, stuff that is being pushed on us in terms of what we're supposed to be doing. All the shiny objects, the TikToks, the clubhouses, the mediums, the blogs, the newsletters. It just, you know, the list goes on. And many of us basically feel 
obliged to jump on the next thing because that's what some guru is saying or this is what I read on LinkedIn you know this is my friend is doing this so it's supposed to be the right thing and what I wanted to do is to help um, solopreneurs simplify how they do their marketing because most of that stuff is actually unnecessary and um, is not bringing clients uh, so my mission with what I do is essentially to make marketing simple and look at your marketing uh, as a holistic um, approach. So meaning that you know why you're doing certain things in your marketing and why, and most importantly, you're not doing certain things in your marketing because most of the stuff that you, a lot of people are doing is probably unnecessary. So um my mission is not to make you do more my mission is to make you do more of the right things and do fewer of the things that are actually not important so um that is essentially what I have learned over the years and this is what I practice for myself because I have felt the um the pain of marketing on my own and that was the probably the most difficult part because I'm supposed to be the expert and I'm suffering as much as anyone else. And that was a very difficult thing to um, get over. So um, um, I would I feel that the whole, the whole marketing uh, process is also therapeutic. And I call my marketing um, marketing therapy sometimes because you get to confront a lot of things also about your mindset and how you view yourself, your limiting beliefs and what you can and you cannot do, what you deserve, uh, how much of an expert you are. All of that is actually coming up in your work on marketing. So it's not just sort of a surface level, putting some polish on things. It's really going deep and understanding yourself, what you bring to the world, understanding your clients, how you can help them and really just putting those things clearly into the world so that people can actually the right people can be attracted and the wrong people can be repelled through how you're talking about yourself and the people that you want to see in your life so in a nutshell if i talk about marketing this is this is my approach this is how i see things um however what i wanted to share with you today and i'm glad that jill has mentioned it because i probably wouldn't have done this myself I wanted to share a bit more of my personal side uh, that um, sort of reveals me outside of marketing. And um, the reason why I can engage in all of those things, a lot of other passions is because of the flexibility of working for myself, right? So I can choose to spend um, a day in the middle of the week going hiking, which is one of my passions. And um, if I was working in a big company, that probably wouldn't be the case. So I'm an avid hiker. Uh, and a little story, two years ago when uh, we got married with my husband, I spent, we spent 24 days hiking across uh, the Swiss Alps, uh, over 400 kilometers, crossing 14 alpine passes and doing about 50,000 meters in altitude change. So that was my probably my biggest athletic achievement of um, my life. Uh, very memorable, and I would not trade it for Maldives or anything uh, similar to that. So that was one thing that I do outside of marketing. I love to read, um, especially when it comes to self-development and psychology, emotional uh, intelligence, so all sorts of things related to human uh, psyche, human um, reality, and human body. So all of that is is really something that I'm interested in. Um, I can recognize edible berries, herbs, and mushrooms. Uh, so I am a big forager, and you can find me in the woods uh, pretty much in every season. And uh, when it comes to the mushroom season, my husband is usually quite exasperated with me because uh, I run out of spaces to carry stuff and he tells me there is no more space left in the bag for more mushrooms, but I just cannot <laughs> help myself. Um, so my family always jokes that, you know, if the worst comes to worst in the world, uh, we can always sustain ourselves because we can find some herbs and find some berries and mushrooms and whatever survive that way. I hope that I don't have to use that in that context uh, one day. And one uh, other passion that I have acquired quite recently is um, 
called the Efirata, which basically is like a, a milder version of climbing, um, which is also safer, but it's also as thrilling as the rock climbing. Um, and you basically go up a rock face in, in a series of ladders and steps, which is kind of cool. And um, I sort of realized that I come across as a bit of an adrenaline junkie, which I never thought I am, but here we go. And to complete the picture and share a bit of a mindful moment with you as well, um, in my last passion, which is about um, creative macro photos and videos. So because I love nature, I uh, also have an aesthetic uh, enjoyment of it. I like to take pictures and make uh, video compilations of the little creepy crawlies that I come across, the beautiful flowers and, and the landscapes. And because I live in Switzerland, which is absolutely stunning and is just, you know, you can spend your days filming things. I never run out of inspiration for that. And I also um, share my video compilations on um, LinkedIn with, with my network. And I wanted to share one a little video which is two minutes uh, with you before I um, proceed to the end of my presentation. So um, let me just do that very quickly. So enjoy. It hasn't come through, um, Kat. Oh. Strange. Um, you know what I will do? I'm just going to share a link to it on Google Drive afterwards so that we don't waste time to um, wait for it. And then I'll just continue with my the final part of your of my presentation. It's a which shame is... because we, we checked everything shared earlier, didn't we? And it, and it did. So I don't know what the... I hope you haven't touched a button and broken it. Uh, it happens. No worries. So what I'll do is... Um, can you, share, can you see my screen now? Yes. Everything is working. Yeah. Perfect. Lovely. So the concept that I get a lot of aha moments when I talk about it uh, with the people who come to my marketing mornings or my clients is the concept of readiness to buy. And basically um, what it means is that if you're trying to sell directly to a market, you are only addressing a very, very small portion of that potential market. And that Basically, those numbers work in um, pretty much any industry and any market um, that you could be operating in. And that 3% of the active buyers are the ones who have the need and are looking actively to buy or to, to find a solution. And this is where basically your referrals are coming from. So you would easily get the people here. You don't have to market yourself so much. You don't have to sell so much or convince them because they are already on the lookout for a solution. And as soon as somebody refers you, they're pretty much sold straight away, which is a wonderful place to be. Uh, however, because um, this is something that is coming from the outside, it's very uncontrollable. And you cannot really influence how often those referrals are coming through. And what happens is that uh, if you only rely on those sort of um, people coming in, you get a source of short business, short term business from this, which is again a fine if you get enough people from that, this is great. But what happens to a lot of people is that it creates very much a feast and famine um, pattern where you basically sit without anything happening for a long period of time. And so, what can help to address um, this issue of feast and famine is to remember that there is a bigger part of the market that has the need that um, you can provide for, right? They have the problem that you can solve, but for whatever reason, they're not ready to act. So they might be uh, not having enough budget right now. They might not have the time. Maybe that problem is just not urgent for them and they, you know, they're dealing with something else. Maybe they have some personal problems. And so um, those people are not interested right now However, when they will be interested, when the time comes, when the issue becomes urgent, they will move up the, that pyramid and they will start looking for the solution. And the key with your marketing is essentially to also start addressing those people who are uh, 
potential clients, but are just not on the verge of buying anything and be there when they decide that this is the right time to start um, looking for a solution. And so what I have seen with a lot of my clients is that um, they, again, rely on somebody sending some business their way, but they do nothing with those potential clients that could be one day interested. And when I, what I mean by doing something is having a relationship with them, either through your content on LinkedIn, having a newsletter for people where you share some valuable content, having events where you share something uh, on your topic, through developing that relationship with them, through establishing your credibility, through creating that trust, you basically move them closer to uh, trusting you enough to go for you once uh, they have the need that has become uh, urgent and important to be solved. And this is where your longer term business will come from. And that will help to even out those feast and famine um, cycles and help you to have a bit more influence over how your business is growing. I hope uh, this has been useful for you. Um, this is the type of stuff that I share in my marketing mornings uh, that are free. Uh, every uh, I do them every month on a Tuesday and I'll pop a link into the chat uh, once uh, I am done sharing here. So I think I did well with 15 minutes. So Jill didn't even have to stop me midway. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much, Kat. That was brilliant. Um, I think we've all been in that space of feast and famine. So to have that kind of awareness uh, and how you can help yourself, uh, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Also, was I the only person who thought about this? Um, I want, want to see that video that you've made um, because I think that might be a, a useful um, source of uh, meditation material for Harold uh, and his community. Who knows where that might go? Because um, it's lovely when you do it, but it's to have a purpose for it um, would be amazing. Can't wait to watch that. Thank you.